largest meetings. To be gathered in Jesus' name does not mean that it is enough to be gathered physically, but to be gathered spiritually through a communion of intentions and thoughts for the good. Then, Jesus is found in the midst of the assembly, either he himself or pure spirits who represent him. Spiritism enables us to understand in which way spirits can be among us. They are among us with their fluidic or spiritual body and with an appearance that we would recognize if they were to make themselves visible. The higher their position in the hierarchy, the greater their power of radiation. It is in this way that they possess the gift of ubiquity and can be at several places at the same time. All they need for this is the emission of their thought. Through these words, Jesus wanted to show the effect of unity and fraternity. It is not the larger or smaller number per se that attracts him, since instead of two or three persons, he could have said ten or twenty. Rather, it is the sentiment of charity animating each one with respect to the others. Therefore, to accomplish this, just two are enough. However, if these two persons each pray on their own accord, then even if they address Jesus, there is no communion of thought between them, especially if they are not motivated by a sentiment of mutual benevolence. By the same token, if they regard each other with prejudice, hatred, envy, or jealousy, the fluidic currents of their thoughts repel rather than unite them in a common impulse of sympathy. Then, they are not gathered in Jesus' name. Jesus is only a pretext for the gathering and not the true motive. This does not imply that Jesus is deaf to the voice of one person alone. If he did not say, I will come to anyone who calls me, it is because he demands, above all else, love for one's neighbor, which may be better displayed in a group than in isolation, and because any individualistic sentiment repels it. Hence, it follows that if in a large gathering only two or three persons are united in heart through the sentiment of true charity, while the others isolate themselves and concentrate on selfish or worldly ideas, Jesus will be with the former and not the latter. It is not, therefore, the simultaneity of the words, hymns, or outward acts that comprise the gathering in Jesus' name, but the communion of thoughts in conformance with the spirit of charity personified in Jesus. Such should be the character of serious spiritist meetings, those in which the concourse of good spirits is desired. Prayer at the Start of the Meeting We pray to Almighty Lord God to send us good spirits to assist us, to keep away spirits who might induce us to error, and to grant us the light necessary to distinguish truth from falsehood. Also, keep away incarnate or discarnate malevolent spirits who might try to sow discord among us and lead us away from charity and love toward our neighbor. If any try to come here, do not allow them access to any of our hearts. Good spirits who come to teach us, render us amenable to your counsels. Keep from us any thought of selfishness pride, envy, or jealousy. Inspire us to be indulgent and benevolent toward our fellow beings, whether present or absent, friendly or hostile. Finally, enable us to recognize your salutary influence through the sentiments that animate us. Give to the mediums whom you entrust to transmit your teachings the holy awareness of the mandate that has been entrusted to them and the seriousness of the act they are about to perform so that they may employ the necessary fervor and concentration to do so.
If in this gathering there are persons who have been attracted by sentiments other than those of the good, open their eyes to the light and forgive them just as we will forgive them if they have come with malevolent intentions. We especially pray to the spirit of, say the name, our spirit guide, to assist us and watch over us. Prayer at the end of the meeting. We give thanks to the good spirits who have wished to come and communicate with us. We pray that they will help us put into practice the teachings they have given, and will help each one of us as we leave this place to feel strengthened in the practice of the good and love toward our neighbor. We also desire that their teachings will be useful for suffering, ignorant or wicked spirits who may have attended this meeting, and for whom we implore God's mercy.